Hey guys, Kirk here, and thank you for joining me on a new video on the channel. In this week's video, we're going to be building up a slope layer for our master material. This is the part of the series I'm doing, Build Worlds V2, where we are creating a game world. If you're interested in making game worlds or aspects of making a game world, uh, then check out the series as a whole. Before we get started though, there is a couple of videos that I would highly recommend that you watch, and that is the master layer video that I created a few weeks ago where we created a master layer which is utilizing the textures you see on screen and also the triplaner video that I did last week um, it's quite important that you go ahead and watch them and make up the master layers and the triplaner projection logic and that that would mean this week's video would be a lot easier to follow uh, this video is going to be fairly long I reckon um, as it is quite a big deal making a slope layer uh, but after this video, we're going to start getting into the really decent stuff where we start creating the automatic side of uh, the landscape where we do slope detection and all that. And then we start blending all our layers together to create something that looks quite decent like a game world. And then we'll be moving on to multiple biomes utilising the next set of videos that are coming. Uh, so yeah, there's some good stuff coming on this channel very soon. Uh, so yeah, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and let's get started with this video. Okay, so like I said, we're going to be utilising the triplanar projection logic that we did last week. Um, like I just mentioned about watching these videos, it's highly recommended, but you can try and pause the videos where you want to see the logic that I'm using. Or if you're okay with, uh, you know, the material graph, you could simply just bring up the logic yourself. Uh, it's completely up to you. Okay, so I'm going to come to my content drawer. I've already got a slope master folder. I created this and put some textures in there what I'm going to be utilizing in this video. So as you can see, in my folder structure, I've got a slope master folder. Double click on that, I've got a textures folder. And I've just got a set of four textures that I'm going to utilize in this video. Okay, so in the slope master folder, I'm going to right click, create a new folder, and this is just going to be called functions. And this folder is obviously going to hold most of the functions that we're going to utilize uh, for our layer. So I'm going to right click, go to materials and material function. And this is going to be called slope underscore master underscore logic. Like so. And straight off the bat, I'm going to highlight that, make sure it's highlighted in blue. Left control and D and duplicate it. I'm going to press the right arrow on the keyboard to get my cursor to the end of the name. And I'm just going to delete the logic side. As this logic function is going to sit within the master function, which is our slope master. Okay, so now the foundations are set up. Let's go ahead and start creating our functions. So our first one, I'm going to right click. Materials, material function. And this one's going to be called uh, try... Underscore planner underscore texture underscore a lot of underscores blending. Okay, we're going to set our um, textures in there. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight these like so. Left control and see, make a copy. Now, it's very important that you realize that we've got our component masks here. This one's the x axis, y axis, and z axis. And we obviously need to make sure we get them inputs for them textures in there as well. So I'm going to open up this function, try playing a texture blending. And I'm just going to click anywhere in the graph and left control and B. And as you can see, I've got them textures in there. So what we need to do, we'll create the output here. And this output, shall we just call it a TP output, try planar. Okay, so we need some function inputs for here. So, like I was saying, we've got an x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. We drag from the UVs and just get type input, and we'll get a function input. And in here, we're going to change the name to UV input. Uh, we're going to put this in brackets, actually, and this could be x-axis. What's up? Now we've got one 
input for our UVs. Um, actually, we're going to change the input type of our UV input to a vector 2. And then we can go ahead and duplicate this another two times. And we're going to do it for the Y axis and Z axis. I'm going to click on my new fun function input. I'm going to delete the underscore 1. The underscore 1, when you duplicate, just means the amount of times it's been duplicated. Because the naming has to be different. So I'm going to delete the X and just put a Y for Y axis. And this one as well. Delete the underscore 2. And this can be Z axis. And we're going to connect them up to each of the individual UVs here. So we're going to want to make a input for our texture. So we're going to drag off the texture input, what you can see here. Just drag off there and get a function input again. This is obviously automatically set the input type to a texture 2D. Uh, for this, we could just simply call this a texture input. Like so. Um, as you can see, we're getting an error. Missing preview connection for our function input. So essentially for that, all we have to do is right click, get a texture object. That's what we need there. You can see texture object. If we go and plug that in there, that uh, will go away. I'm just going to search in this uh, texture object for a placeholder. And we'll just get a white placeholder for this. Um, what I'm looking for when that, that information box appears is the virtual texture streaming at the bottom. I'm not going to use a virtual texture streaming placeholder. Um, there's no real big difference in it, but I just like to be really organized. And as you can see, this particular texture is true to virtual textures, uh, whereas this one is false. So I'm going to use that. Like I say, it doesn't make a really massive difference with a placeholder. Um, but I do like to be organized. I'm going to drag off there into the texture input of each of these. Now, obviously, our noodles are getting everywhere now. So a good uh, way or workflow to what I use here is I'll just double click on that middle one. And now I've got a pin there. And essentially, this reroute pin is an extension from our input. So we're just going to drag off there and put it into these inputs. It just makes it look a little bit more neat and tidy and easier to work with. Okay, we need some inputs for our masks for our texture blending. So I'm going to drag off this alpha, get an input. And this could be called Tri Planner Mask. Right, so and in brackets, I'm going to put X and Y. Yep, just like that. So essentially, it's our triplanar mask for our blending our X and Y together. And then I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm just going to put Z in here. So we know it's a Z uh, axis. Right, so. Okay, so that's that function pretty much set up. What we need to do now is to... Um, initialize them. Or not initialize them, set the priority, sorry. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to start with the texture input at the top. So the set priority here, we're going to leave at zero. Then the X axis, we're going to set the priority of one and two for that one and three for the Z. Uh, it could be four for that mask and then five for this. So essentially when you set the priority in a function, I just get something like world align. You can see here with this function that you start at the top in the normals. You don't have to get this function, I'm just utilising it to showcase what set priority is. So essentially this would start at 0, and then it'll go 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And it just sets the order at which your inputs look on the outside of the function. And that's what we did with these, just set the priority. Okay, so that is done. You can hit save on there. Um, bring that out. And... How should we do this? I think we can close the mass of material down. By the end of the video, our slope layer will be able to sit down here. We can paint with it and all this good stuff. Uh, but we don't need that shader just yet. Okay, so now we've got that. Let's get our UVs. So I'm going to highlight all of this. Left control and C and just make a copy. We'll come into our functions folder in our slope master. We're going to right click, go to materials, material function. And this is going to be our... 
um, world and it's got position I forgot how to spell position yeah underscore UVs like so we can just open that function up and do it again um, going to left click anywhere in the graph and then left control and V and essentially what we need here this is our global UVs um, we're going to drag off the absolute node like I say if you've not followed the last week's video you can simply just pause it here and bring them nodes in yourself and get a function input and this can be called um, slope layer uh, UVs simply nice and easy that's that uh, what I am going to do I'm going to set the use preview value as default essentially whatever preview value is in here it will use that input as a default if outside the function uh, we don't have anything plugged in it will utilize this value here I'm going to right click and convert this to a constant and move that in so all we need to do now is create outputs so this output is going to be our x-axis we can just put x axis so set priority as zero is fine i want this at the top i'm going to duplicate this two more times this could be our y-axis and we'll set this priority to one drag off there oh I'm missing these uh, inputs today. Okay, and we need a Z axis. I'll just start fresh. Z axis. And this set priority can be two. Okay, so that is that sorted out. I'm going to hit apply and save that. And there we go. What I need now is to get um, this mask. As you can see, I've got a set of reroute nodes here. I'm not really a big fan of reroute nodes, but utilizing them in this situation is fine. Um, what I am going to do, um, yeah, I'll just utilize this. I'm going to highlight all of this. Uh, left control and C. I'm going to put this in its own function. This is our triplanar mask. If you remember, we set up the inputs for our X and Y and our Z. And this is going to be the mask that does that. Let me think. There is no, um, there's no real need. What I could essentially do is just put this directly into here. To be honest, um, should we do that? Mm -mm -mm. Uh, no, I'll create this new function. So I'm going to right-click functions folder, materials, material function. This is going to be our try. Let's go planner. Let's go mask. Like so. Simply just file that in there. Let's open it up. Left control and V to copy that in. You can see we're getting an error. Don't worry about that. So as it stands here, we don't really need any inputs here. We just need outputs. So I'm going to drag off this top component mask. I'm going to call this uh, TP. Uh, mask and in brackets we're going to go x and y like so set priority at zero that's fine we we'll duplicate that and at the end here we're just going to put a z like that we're going to set this priority to one there we go and that's our mask built we're going to hit apply and save um, done our texture blending we don't need that right what is next I do want to build up our function for our normal so I'm going to highlight all of this right, so left control and C um, try play the mask texture blending um, just going to duplicate this actually left control and D and duplicate it try playing a blending underscore normals like so now I could just open this up you can see we already have our texture inputs in here so left control and V copy this in 
And essentially I've done that so I could just quickly assign these inputs to it, make it a lot easier uh, to work with. Uh, so what I am going to do is just to grab this, tell you what, I'll grab it right there so I get that little extension pin, my control and C, make a copy. Um, actually no, actually no, I'm just going to disconnect them because if I make a copy, left, if you want to disconnect from inputs like this, hold left alt down on your keyboard, hold it down and just click on the inputs, you can see here. Uh, but essentially what, if I was going to duplicate them, it, it, I'd have to change the name of them. So I'm just going to disconnect them, highlight them all, and move them down like this. Very simple. Uh, texture input. we we'll change, but add the name normal to it. So we know this is, we'll, we'll know in general it's the normal function. I'll change the placeholder to a blue one. So place. Holder. If we have go here, we've got a blue one. Uh, virtual texture streaming is false. We're going to use that one. Essentially, we just need to connect all these up now. So, there we go. One thing I have forgot to mention, guys, um, is to make sure your texture samples are set to shared wrap, like mine are in the sampler source. Uh, this will just enable it to work a lot better uh, with regards to textures. Um, if you don't set them to shared wrap, then it counts it as an extra uh, texture sample. And you don't want that because it will slow your machine down. And just make it very laggy and slow. Okay, so let's get these as well. Like so. Remember, hold down left alt and click on the input. We'll just drag these in here, right so. So the set priorities are already set up. So we don't need to worry about that. We'll utilize this output. It says TP output. Um, we'll put TP normal output. That's fine as it is. We could go ahead and delete them. From there, one thing we will need is the Vertex Normal to power this. So we'll drag off the breakout of float 3 and get Vertex Normals in world space. And now this should look right. There we go. And that is our Triplanet Normal setup, I think. Yep. Let's just hit Apply and Save. We can close that down. I don't think we need, yeah, look, Vertex Normals in world space. We don't actually need this material anymore. So we can come to our slope master and we'll get the logic open and we'll start populating our logic function for our slope master, utilizing the functions we've just created. I just actually just highlight them all, drag them in. Um, let's sort these out a little bit. So I've got my world uh, position, UVs. Uh, our mask and our triplane texture blending and we've got our blending for normals which is cool so we're utilizing if we go to layers slope master textures we've got four textures albedo displacement normal and roughness so we've already got our normals so i needed two more of these if i just left control and d duplicate them we've got our albedo our roughness and our height or displacement um, we just need to connect these up now the way i like to do this is to just drag them in so connect them up just do that dead quick or as quick as possible it's a bit monotonous this part it's got to be done okay we'll drag that into there like so then UVs for our normals. Like so. Okay, that's that set up. And now that is all set up. Uh, what we could do now is create our mask. We're going to use reroute declaration nodes for this. So I'm going to comment this box and I'm going to call this TP mask. 
I did simple, could leave the font, we'll choose some random colour, like so, and then we'll move this out a bit, we'll drag off here and just type RER, and what we want is the add named reroute declaration node, and essentially what this does is it allows the information to travel from this input, if you like, of the reroute declaration node to the output of the same node, wherever it is in the graph without the noodle so it's quite good so for this we're going to go x and y uh, mask like so and we'll do one for the z as well so r e r add named reroute declaration node and this is going to be z mask like so and now we've got them set up we can just move these up a little bit i don't want them too far a lot of people use utilize reroute nodes like they'll put them down here when the mask is up here and all this good stuff but i don't like to do that what i'm going to do is create a input for this so i'm going to drag off the slope layer input I'll just type input get a function input this could be of scalar parameter type and we'll just call this slope layer uvs um we don't need to set this up in the fashion of uh using the preview because we've already got it inside the function itself so let's set up the set priority zero we'll have this right at the top okay we need some inputs for our texture inputs so we'll drag off the first one get an input and this function input is going to be our albedo Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go slope layer albedo. Like so. Um, we will need a preview, so we'll drag off the preview and get a texture object, which is not the function. We need the parameter texture object, like so. Uh, we'll create that, we'll get that placeholder. Got this one okay so what i can actually do here is just duplicate this like so that could be our roughness and this could be our height and this could be our normal so all we have to do now is to come in here get rid of the albedo and just put roughness like so this one can be height I'll put in brackets uh, displacement like so and then this could be our normals like so there's a lot of fidgeting about with uh, inputs and functions but once it's built up it's just so much cleaner and better so I'll just duplicate these got some previews and we'll just connect these up now like so i'm sorry about the length for this video guys but i do like to showcase my tutorials in detail or anyone who's looking to get into this kind of thing we'll do that just tidy this up a little bit so it looks a bit more better like so may have to move that mask out of the way a little bit there we go it's a lot of fidgeting about but if you're a regular viewer on my channel you'll know that i do like things neat and tidy uh, they're easy readable like so Okay, I'm going a bit too far with this now. What we need to do is connect our reroute node to our mask. To get the output of our reroute nodes, you just simply right click and you'll see named reroutes. We'll get the X and Y mask and we'll get the Z mask. And we can just simply connect these up to the relevant inputs of our texture blending functions. Do that. And I can simply just duplicate these or all of these. Just connect these up. 
and so. It's weird because it's arbitrary doing this kind of thing for uh, materials, but I kind of enjoy it in all honesty. Okay, so essentially now we're all set up. All we need to do is to get the um, other master layer that we've got. So if we go to layers master, we're going to open the logic function. Like I say at the beginning of the video, it's quite important that you go back and watch the build of this material layer. Um, but for now, I just want to copy all of this because we're going to be utilizing this uh, in our slope master. I'll just come give ourselves a bit of room because there's going to be some tidying up to do here. Left control and C. I may not use the height lerp yet. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll see. But what I'm going to do, if we look at the master layer, our output there is going into the A of the lerp and the blend overlay, which is for our color. We'll do the same here. Like so. And then... Shall we take the inputs as well? Let's do that. Yeah, we'll take the inputs. Um, we'll take it all actually. Yeah, we'll just take it all. Left control and C. We'll just, what I'll do is I'll just plunk them up here. Like so. And the reason I've took this, uh, this is a function input like we've been using all the video. But essentially the set priority has been set to 20 and then all these here are 21 22 23 24 and so on and so on so these will all be in order we'll need the um this one textures we'll copy that as well and this could go right above it and they're essentially our inputs we've already set the inputs up here so we just need to set the priority in comparison with them we can drag this down here like so so if i click on the textures input you'll see that this starts at zero so the slope layer uvs i'm going to set this to actually minus one and that essentially will mean we've gone past zero so this is going to always be at the top so it'll go minus one then zero and then from here, we'll just go one. Um, this one will be a two. This one will be three. This will be four. Like so that's not straight. It is now. Um, so that's our textures. And then we've got material options here. Um, so we have our material color overlay. That essentially is this so um and this one the overlay intensity is the alpha of our lerp um, and then we have our contrast our contrast is going to go into this pin which goes into the transition phase of the height lerp and then this the height texture is just to come from the height texture like that this may work it may not we'll have to see because this is utilizing triplanar projection it may work it may not like i say uh, but we'll soon find out i'm sure uh, now this is set up i can just delete that because i know where it goes uh, we just need to move it so it doesn't look like it is now um gonna create a bit of space we're gonna put these in here um that's not straight Right, so fire this up a little bit what we can do is double pin into that there because it's just an extension and we can just drag that into there just creating that bit of space to make it look all neat and tidy we'll just throw this under here right, so we'll just move this along right so Okay, what's the next one? This is our color intensity. Uh, we'll put this here. We'll get our color intensity. Um, yeah. 
we'll just do this. That should be okay. We'll get our contrast in that uh, node as well. Let's put our contrast in here. We'll pull that there. Drop it down one. Oh, wrong one. It may look all confusing, this guy's, but just makes us all neat and tidy. Well, not massively neat and tidy. I could probably do a better job of this, but uh, time is of the essence. Let's just pull this up here a bit. A bit of space. That's our contrast. That's our blend. We don't essentially need that pin. Just put that straight in there. And there we go. Uh, for the roughness, we're just going to drag this into the B input of our lerp. Bring this pin over here for now. And this, like I say, is our roughness, which is this one here. And then we can just simply fire this into the alpha of our lerp. So we'll move it in a bit. And we can just organize this up a little bit so we can see what's going on here. So and this could be the, we could delete that actually. This is just the output for the roughness. Okay, so this is our height. This needs to go here. And this is our normal. Oh. Uh, which will go down here. So if I get the, um, the height, this is normal, like so. I'll fire this here, I'll just plug that into that dot, or that reroute extension pin. And then we can just put from the multiply add, we'll just put that in there. Like I said, it might be a bit of a weird video, this one. I'm not used to doing videos like this, but if I was to build the whole slope layer from scratch it would literally take about two hours the material layer that uh the video material layer to build it up was just the material layer not this is not including the triplanar side of things or anything like that um, and that video i think was about an hour and 40 minutes long i'm not the fastest person in the world but i do my best <laughs> okay so we just need to set up the things for height for here we'll just drag it into the power and what i need now is just, i'm going to move this out a little bit all right so get all of them and we'll just plug these into their relevant positions put that there essentially i don't need that i could just do this plug that into there move this up all right so but this I could plug straight in there and move that pin up just to make it look a little better. And then we have this one. I could plug that in there. Like so. Um, I hope after all this work that it actually does work correctly. But I think that is all set up. We're still utilising these material options from the previous video where we created the material layer. Um, and this set priority is 20, so all these should be like 21. Uh, that's 23, so this will be 22, and so on and so on. Uh, so yeah, that seems to be okay. What I need to do is drag off our output and get what's called a set material attributes. And essentially a set material attributes is like the make material attributes, like you would see in any kind of material. Uh, but with a set material attributes, you could choose what outputs you want. So here... I want a base color, a roughness, a opacity, and normal. So here I'm going to set and change the roughness in the details panel here on the left hand side. And then I will set opacity. The reason I'm using opacity is because that's what I've utilized in our logic. As you can see here, this is our height here and I've utilized the opacity for that as well. Oh, I do need a specular. So I'll go in here and add a specular right at the end. Okay, so we just need to connect these up. So I'm going to go from the result into the base color. Uh, the roughness is going to go straight into that lerp. And this is our opacity. And uh, hang on a second. Change that roughness to a normal. 
nearly caught me out then. And what I want with this specular, I'm just going to add it to this zero. And just add a zero to the specular. Then we're going to hit apply. Now, we've um, created the actual logic function for this slow player. Um, this ain't, like I said, this ain't the kind of thing I like to do on my channel, but just to save time, uh, I've just utilized the material layer that we created a few videos ago, where we actually went in and created all the different functions. Uh, that's why I expressed at the beginning of the video, it's very important that you go and watch the material layer video. I know it's a long one, but still, if you want to learn. Uh, and also, I'm not going to save that. And also watch the triplanar projection video as well. Very important aspects. Okay, so now we've got that. What I want to do is to create an output for our height. So this is our height. As you can see, height displacement carries through. So from here, I'm going to drag from the add. And just type output. And we need the function output. And then we're just going to rename this to height. And we'll set the priority as one and this result is going to be our material like so uh, one thing i will need to do for this height is to grab a component mask and essentially i'm going to utilize this component mask to get the red channel of our texture so i'm going to uncheck the green so it's just a red and uh, that is pretty much done for the logic what I need to do is to open our, come back to layers, slope master and the slope master function that has nothing inside of it. And then this slope master logic, what we've just been working in here, needs to be saved. I'm going to drag that function into here. As you can see, all our uh, inputs are fine. They're great. Uh, this, we're going to name this output as material. We'll duplicate it, and this could be our height, like we did in the logic, and we'll set the priority as one. We could just drag that straight to them outputs. You'll see we're getting errors, don't worry about that. That's just because we've got no input information in here. Uh, so let's not worry about that. Okay, and what we can do from here is to start adding our parameters. So I'm going to right click, promote to a parameter, and press right arrow. And delete the s in brackets uh, this default value i think it was 1100 oh that's 11,000. then we'll just put one as a minimum and 5,000 as a max in this section i'm not going to be grouping all these up guys i just want to uh, add showcase adding all the parameters in and how i would do it um, i'm not going to group them all up i'll do that at another stage um, but for now, we can just build up our uh, scale parameters and stuff like that. So I'm going to right click on the promote to a parameter and get rid of all these. Just do that. And we've just got to do this for each input. So right click, promote to parameter, right arrow, delete the uh, initialization on the end, just like so. do that we'll right click promote to parameter get rid of this and that's essentially what we're going to be doing uh, for this now and um, there's a different way that I want to approach these inputs I don't want to create a scalar parameter for all of them I want to use what are called the vector falls I did showcase this in the material layer video and essentially what you could do with a vector 4 is to make it all compact. So what I mean is if we hold 4 down on the keyboard and left click, we'll get a vector 4. We can right click that and convert to a parameter. And for this, it could be called slope layer color. All right, so I'm going in brackets, I'm going to put intensity in alpha and close brackets 
So what I'm meaning by that now is I've got a material color. We're just going to go in there. I'm going to set the default to white. You can do it like this, or you can just do a one in all the values. As you can see, the alpha value stayed at zero. In a vector four, the alpha could be utilized. So what we do is come to the bottom. Yours may be closed up like this. Click the little drop down arrow. You have a channel names. You can name each individual channel. So in the alpha, I'm going to put color intensity. All right, so I can initialize them the name intensity in alpha, and we could just simply drag from there and put it in the intensity. And for this, I'm going to set a default value of 0.5. It's looking a little funny, all that, but never mind. Um, and that's that set up. And then I'm going to get another um, full vector. Hold four on the keyboard and left click. Right click it, convert to a parameter. And this could be called slope layer options. Like so. And what I want is the material contrast, the roughness and the normal for this. So we're just using the RGB. So for the first one, we want contrast. Second one will be roughness, and the third one will be normal, like so. And in the alpha, I'm just going to put XX, capital XX, just to signify it's not being used. Then we can just simply drag these in, like so. And we need one more for our height. We right click, promote to parameter. We'll call this slope player height options. And what we need is a contrast intensity and had had add <laughs> contrast. Start again, spell it wrong. Have I spelled it wrong again? No. Have I? No. <laughs> um Turn city and add. Like so uh, the default value for the add, I'm going to set to a 0.5. Um, with the way these heights are blending, the the how can I put this? It's quite tricky to get height blending to work correctly within the Unreal Engine. Um, and all I know is to do is a power for the contrast, multiply for the intensity, and add in uh, an extra bit of multiplying with an add node. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, my logic may be incorrect, but it's, um, we'll see what we'll see what it's like anyway. I'm just going to highlight them all. I'm actually going to set them as a group. Slope options. Right, so I'll put all these in there as well. So they're all in the same place. Oh, I have to do it this way. Slope options and slope options. Okay, so like I showed at the beginning of the video, I've already got textures to put in here. If you're using the Quixel textures, um, you could just utilize the ORD or your ambient occlusion if you want to use it, and then you'll have roughness and the height in the ORD uh, texture that is provided with Quixel. Okay, so I am going to apply some textures here. So I'm gonna get me albedo, and then my roughness, and then my displacement, and my normal. Let's have a look at this. That looks quite good actually, I'm not going to lie, it's worked out quite well. Uh, let's apply it and save, save that as well. Let's go and debug. We'll leave it open for now actually. What I'm going to do is come to my landscape shader, I want to open my master material. Uh, in the layer blend node, I'm going to add a new layer, this is going to be called slope. And then we're going to make this blend type of height like so, like we have done with all the rest. And we're going to add our layers 
slot master and our slot master function will come in here and we'll just apply it like so okay so let's hit apply and let all our shaders compile and then we'll save it again okay and let's open landscape mode uh, we'll hit this little bar up here go into landscape mode um, and then paint uh, slope test what is that I think that's when I was testing yeah We go. I had a bit of a delay then, guys. I don't know what went on. Um, as you can see, I've got a slope test there. Um, this ain't the case, because it's called Slope Master. So I think that is from when I was testing. Oh, never mind. Uh, what I will do is, we can just leave that, actually. Um, I'm going to do what's called a restart. So I'm going to come back to my world. I'm going to make sure it's all saved. At the bottom right here, you can see all saved. And then what I'm simply going to do is come to my recent levels and you'll see I've got a reset map. To create a reset map, just go on new level, create a basic level and OK. And essentially if I go to recent levels and go reset map, you'll see that it's just an arbitrary new little level that I used to reset the cache. Now I've moved it, make a save and then recent levels and come back to our Bill Worlds V2. And let this load up as you can see now we're back in the level we've got our slope master in the layer blend node for our landscape we'll come back go to landscape mode and you'll see our slope test has now uh, gone away which is great we could just click the delete layer if you ever get that with the question mark that means it's not available but you still got the layer info so we'll just delete the layer like so, and you can see we've got our slope um, paintable material here now. I've actually got a slope layer info as well, so I'll just apply that. What I want to do, because I'm working on editable layers on the landscape, I'm going to choose landscape material, and then I could come to the slope, and let's give it a draw. Let's hope it works. Make it a bit smaller. Boom, let's just see what happens here. Mm -mm -mm. And there you go a nice um, well I say nice the UVs are massive but it has worked out how I wanted it to work out as you can see let's uh, see what happens when you uh, paint on other textures let like that build like so and there we go nice little uh, paintable textures now and the best thing about this, let's just zoom off up here up to this cliff side because this uh, material layer is uh, triplanar projected, uh, it should not stretch. I could have speeded the camera up a little bit more, but never mind, we're right now. <laughs> As we can see, there's a texture on there and it is stretching. I paint this down, oh, slight build. Mm -mm. If I paint this down, right there, a bit weird. It's got this dirt one. No layer info. All right, okay. Apply the layer info. Let this build. <laughs> mm. When testing can be irritating. Uh, right, okay. So if I just paint on here with this uh, dirt layer, if I get a bit closer, you can see Apart from the blending, you have to work on the blending, the height blending a bit more. As you can see, the grass is coming through the dirt layer. Uh, but you can see that it's stretching. But if I go onto our slope, let it build. Like so. And you'll see now that we get no stretching. There's a lot of work to be done with the blending of the height or the values for the blending. But in general, oh, what's happened there? There we go. Um, you can see the grass is coming through. Let's slow that right down. 
you can see the grass is coming through the rock but this is in your material instance that can be changed with the blended options uh, but as you can see I would say this is quite successful for a slope material layer with our triplanar projection applied onto it okay so what we could do let's select our money press F on the keyboard it whips me right to him um, so yeah I feel that it's quite successful uh, successful <laughs> come to the landscape shader I want to open the material instance as you can see I just set the group of our uh, slope layer to slope where is it see it right slope slope is here mm. it looks a little different from all the others but they still work uh, slope layer color intensity uh, slope layer options and slope layer UVs we reduce some UVs a little bit you can see now the UVs are changing Oops, up. Uh, slope layer options a contrast raise that contrast a little bit you can see the blending isn't great so a one for the roughness the normal we'll do a one there you go I'll tell you what we'll do with a 1.6 it's not really a good thing to do but you can clearly see normals are working we'll go 2.1 them normals and then, like we say slope layer color intensity in alpha and we've set it to 0.5 go zero really dark one really bright zero i'm going to go for a 0.2 on there that's quite a nice uh, little color and where's our height options here so our height a little bit funny let's create some contrast on that height and you'll see that it starts to uh, stop that grass coming through the layer which is great uh, let's see this add let's put a zero in there as you can see it completely gets rid of the slope layer put one in it and then it comes back it's brilliant okay so that for me is quite a successful build of a slope layer um, it's all ready to go now for the rest of the videos for this series where we are going to what should we do next we're going to create our uh, slope detection next where it's going to automatically detect slopes depending on angle and then it'll project our slope layer onto sharp angles with the triplanar projection and our grass layer on more flatty areas uh, which is cool and then after that we're going to start blending multiple layers down and then we'll be moving onto uh, biomes uh, for our landscape shader okay guys if you found this useful and interesting i apologize for how long it is uh, but there's pretty much nothing i can do about that i did specify at the beginning of the, the series that all my videos are going to be highest detail as possible um so yeah if you did enjoy it hit that subscribe button hit the like button and i'll see you in the next video thank you